time. Is our idea of musical time, and therefore rhythm, the same as Monteverdi's? At first, we might think that time is one of those essential concepts that has always been understood in a similar way. But Einstein completely changed the scientific view of space and time with his ideas about relativity. Most of those ideas, to say nothing of the more advanced ideas that have come along since, um, in the writings of Stephen Hawking, for example, most of these ideas seem very paradoxical, rather counterintuitive to most of us. So even 20th, not to mention 21st century time, is a little bit strange for most of us. We're much happier with Newton's idea of absolute time, time like a river that flows steadily in one direction, time as an absolute scale against which we can measure whatever we want to measure, the movement of the stars and planets, the speed of a piece of music. Newton wrote his Principia in 1687, so it's fairly certain that his idea of time that we are so comfortable with is not the idea that Monteverdi had around the year 1600. In that earlier period, the philosophy of time was essentially derived from Aristotle, the idea that time is a number of change in respect of before and after. So when we see something change, then we know that some time has passed. In the early music period, people looked to the clock of the heavens. The movements of the stars showed the changing seasons and the cycle of the complete year. The movement of the sun across the sky showed the day and the sun reaching its zenith defined the moment of noon. And so clocks divided up one solar day into approximately 24 hours. Nowadays we see this the other way around. We have very sophisticated clocks. We define time by a very, very, very small unit based on the oscillation of a cesium atom. And from these small units, we can measure the movement of the sun. And so modern almanacs tell us if the sun will reach noon at 12.03 or maybe 11.57. That way of thinking is utterly foreign to Monteverdi's period. They're starting with the long period, the year or the day, and they're dividing that up into hours and minutes. And their very best clocks could just about indicate a second, but couldn't measure it precisely. It was towards the end of the 16th century that Galileo discovered the pendulum effect, watching the swing of a big chandelier in Pisa Cathedral. But how did he manage to time it? How did he know it was swinging with a constant beat? He didn't have any kind of clock that could measure this. He had to time it against his own pulse, against his own heartbeat. So time was heavenly, time was human in our own pulse, and those definitions of time had a higher position in the hierarchy than the mechanical idea of a clock or the small little ticking beats of quick notes in music. It's defined from the long period downwards. 
when Galileo wanted to do more sophisticated experiments with time, he wanted to measure the acceleration due to gravity. So now he needed split second timing. And for this, there was no possibility of using any kind of clock available to him. Although he'd observed the pendulum effect, the first pendulum clocks weren't built till many decades later. So Galileo used music to subdivide time into split-second quantities. After all, if you're counting a minimum as about one second, then a crotchet is half a second, a quaver is a quarter of a second, and a semi-quaver, that's a pretty fast note for early music, is an eighth of a second. That's pretty good timing in an age when the best clocks could only roughly indicate one second. So whereas today we use time in the shape of digital metronomes to measure music, in Monteverdi's period they used music to measure time. So what does all this philosophy mean for us as we play early music today? It means that we shouldn't worry so much about quantities in terms of time and more about the quality of time. We can't really know exactly how fast a piece went because they didn't have a way to measure it. And even later in the 17th century and in the early 18th century, when they did have a way to measure it, actually musicians didn't use these ways so much. They preferred to keep on talking in the old ways about pulse or about the way one would walk if one was going to cover a certain distance in so many hours. So we see from this that the quality of time in the Baroque period remains something which is dividing up a long, slow beat rather than adding up very short periods. The quality of time is somehow something mystical, heavenly, cosmic, something divine. And so John Dowland can write that it's a moral duty to keep time. It's an offence against God himself to go out of time. Time moves like the beating of your heart, a slow, steady beat. We can divide it up. One, two, 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 three, two, in duple or in triple. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. We can Divided in different proportions. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or even one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. But underneath it all, there's a slow, steady beat, like the perfect movement of the cosmos, which is dependable and regular. We don't have to assume that all those little subdivisions are absolutely equal. In fact, everything we read about the quality of time in the Baroque period tells us that they were not. There were good or important divisions of time and bad or less important divisions of time. So when we're dividing into three, one, two, three, one, two, three, those three little units are not necessarily exactly the same. Probably the first is longer. So this is how time feels. It's something like the heavens. It's your moral duty to keep it going steadily. Otherwise the sky will fall. And it's like your heartbeat. If the pulse stops, the music also dies. 
Baroque time is quality time. 